Hello, in this lecture we'll study exponential functions. We'll look at the equations for exponential functions as well as how to evaluate them and find their domain and range. As far as graphical properties of these functions, they have some standard curve shapes. We'll find their horizontal asymptote and look at how to plot these functions using standard graph transformations. So suppose b is a positive number. The exponential function with base b is f of x equals b to the x. It is important here that b not be 0 and not be negative. So b must be a positive number. The number b in this case is called the base of the function. Now b equals 1 is a particularly uninteresting choice of base. In this case you would get the function 1 to the x, but 1 raised to any power is just 1. So in this case, f of x is simply the constant function 1, which isn't terribly interesting, and it's something we already know how to work with. However, if we pick any other choice of b, b to the 0 will always be equal to 1, and here it is important that b isn't 0, because 0 to the 0 is not defined, and it's also important that b not be negative when we want to evaluate at certain other values of x. So for example, suppose f of x is 2 to the x. If we plug in whole numbers for x, we will get out powers of 2. For example, f of 1, f of x is 2 to the x, so f of 1 is 2 to the 1. 2 to the first power is simply 2. f of 2, well, since f of x is 2 to the x, f of 2 is 2 to the second, which is 4. f of 3 is 2 to the third, which is 8, and so on. Fractional exponents, if you pick fractions for the value of x, are related to roots of the function x to the 1 over n, remember, is simply the nth root of x. x to the m over n can alternately be considered as the nth root of x to the m, or the nth root of x to the m. And using this knowledge, we can evaluate f of x equals 2 to the x at fractional values of x. For example, f of 1 half would be 2 to the 1 half power. That's the square root of 2. It's here, incidentally, that we see why b shouldn't be allowed to be negative. If b was a negative number, then f of 1 half would be b to the 1 half, in other words, the square root of b. But if b is negative, this won't be a real number. So when b is negative, we have problems with certain fractional exponents, and we don't want to worry about that, so we say b cannot be negative. And earlier we pointed out that b shouldn't be allowed to be positive because 0 to the 0 is undefined, and therefore b is restricted to be a positive number. Proceeding with our example of f of x equals 2 to the x, f of 1 third would be 2 to the 1 third, that's the cube root of 2 and f of 2 thirds would be 2 to the 2 thirds, which is the cube root of 2 squared or the cube root of 4. Remember that x to the 0 is 1 because x isn't allowed to be 0, so x to the 0 will be 1. x to the minus 1 is 1 over x, and x to the minus n is 1 over x to the n. So proceeding with f of x equals 2 to the x, f of 0 is 2 to the 0, that's 1. f of minus 1 is 2 to the minus 1, that's a half and f of minus 2 would be 2 to the minus 2, or 1 over 2 squared, or 1 quarter. Now let's suppose f of x is 2 to the x, and g of x is 3 to the x, so we have two separate functions, they're both exponential, but they have different bases. The base of f is 2, and the base of g is 3. We're going to plug in certain values of x and plot them on a standard set of coordinate axes to sort of see what the difference between these two functions is going to be. So we're going to take a look at values of x going from negative 2 to 3, and plot both 2 to the x and 3 to the x. 2 to the minus 2 is 1 over 2 squared is a quarter. There it is, negative 2 comma 1 quarter. 2 to the minus 1 is a half, so there is negative 1 comma 1 half. 2 to the 0 is 1, there it goes. 2 to the first is 2, 1 comma 2. 2 squared is 4, 2 comma 4. And 2 to the third is 8. There is the point. 3 comma 8. If we connect the points with a reasonable looking curve, it ends up looking something like this. Now let's take a look at the function 3 to the x. 3 to the minus 2 would be 1 over 3 squared or a ninth. That's going to be a smaller value than 2 to the x, so we'll plot it down there. Negative 2 comma 1 ninth. 3 to the minus 1 is a third, so here is negative 1 comma a third just below 1 half. However, 3 to the 0 is exactly equal to 1, so it's the same point. 3 to the first is 3, which is larger than 2 to the first. 3 squared is 9, which is larger than 2 squared. And 3 to the third is 27, which is way the heck up there. And if we connect these points with a graph, it looks a little bit different. It has the same general shape, but it's a bit steeper to the right and flatter to the left. Now these curves are very close to the x-axis. In other words, the y value is very small when x gets negative. 
but then the curves grow very, very fast. They get very large when x is positive. This is typical when you have a base which is larger than one. If your base is larger than one and you raise it to larger and larger powers, this sort of represents multiplying a number against itself many times, and since that number is larger than one, it grows very quickly. However, for negative values of x, you will be dividing by raising a number to a positive power. So you would be dividing by a large number, you'd be getting very small. Now let's look at the function h of x equals one half to the x, an example where the base is less than one. One half is two to the minus one. So h of x being one half to the x can be represented as two to the minus one to the x. And thanks to how exponents work, this is two to the minus x. So what we have is a reflection of the graph of two to the x, but not a vertical reflection. It's a horizontal reflection across the y axis. So here was the graph of y equals two to the x. We're now going to replace all of the x values with their negatives. In other words, we're going to flip everything horizontally across the y axis. There it is. So this is the graph of h of x equals one half to the x. So to the left, as x approaches minus infinity, h of x grows quickly, whereas when x gets larger and goes to infinity, the graph gets very small. And this will be typical of when you have a base smaller than one. To the right, you have a large power of x. You are raising b to a large power, but here b is less than one. So when you multiply it against itself over and over again, it gets very small very quickly. In contrast, to the left of the y-axis, when you have a number b to a large negative power, that is the same as one divided by the number b to a large positive power. Since we've already argued that b to a large positive power is very small, one over that is one over a very small number is very large. Alternately, just think of it in terms of this reflection. Let's study properties of exponential functions. We'll let f of x be b to the x. Remember that b has to be positive, and b equals one is a particularly uninteresting case, and we generally discard it. So what's the general shape of the graph of this function? Well, when b is positive, it will look something like this, collapsing down towards the x-axis to the left and growing very quickly to the right. When b is in between 0 and 1, it's quite the reverse. It explodes to the left of the y-axis and collapses down to the 0 as x gets bigger. What are some properties of these graphs? Well, the domain of the function is all real numbers. The number b can be raised to any power you want, and here it was important that b was positive. The range, however, is not all real numbers. We are only getting out positive numbers. The range of an exponential function with positive base is positive numbers. Students get this confused very often. Just remember, if you have a number b and you raise it to a negative power, that's one over the number to a positive power. So if b to a positive power is positive, one over that is still positive. The range of an exponential function is the positive numbers. Here it's important that b not be equal to one. Remember, if b equals one, we have the constant function. The range would only be the number one. However, when b is larger than one or in between zero and one, we can see from both of these graphs that the range, the possible y values, collapses down towards zero and gets as big as we want, or under this reflection, the same thing, it gets da collapses down towards zero or gets as big as we want. So for any positive number b except one, the range of b to the x is every single positive number. Y equals zero acts as a horizontal asymptote of this graph. Now in contrast to horizontal asymptotes of rational functions, it's only in one direction. For B larger than one, the horizontal asymptote Y equals zero is approached only as X goes to minus infinity, but not as X goes to plus infinity. Whereas when B is between zero and one, the horizontal asymptote of Y equals zero is approached as X goes to infinity and not as X goes to minus infinity. f of zero will always be equal to one because we have discarded the choice of b equals zero. Any number b to the zero other than that will be one. So there we have it, regardless of whether b is larger than one or less than one, zero comma one will belong to this graph. Also, when b is bigger than one, the function is increasing from left to right. However, if we have b between zero and one and we've done this reflection, we are decreasing as we move left to right. Let's do an example of graphing an exponential function. Let g of x equal negative two to the x. Observe that this is not negative two in parentheses to the x. The base is positive two. We have two to the x, and then we multiply by negative one. 
and then we take that whole thing and we add 3. So negative 2 to the x plus 3. Use graph transformations to give the graph, state the domain, range, and horizontal asymptote. So we're going to start with the basic function 2 to the x and apply some graph transformations. So we'll include the horizontal asymptote and two points on the curve for reference. Here's the graph of y equals 2 to the x. It always contains the point 0, 1, any b to the x will. However, it also contains 1, 2. 2 to the first is equal to 2. So if we let x equal 1, y equals 2 to the 1 will be equal to 2. And the horizontal asymptote of this exponential curve, as any base exponential curve will be, is y equals 0. Next, we're going to multiply everything by negative 1. That's a vertical flip. So we reflect across the x-axis. So the graph will look something like this. Instead of the points 0, 1, and 1, 2, we now contain 0, negative 1, and 1, negative 2, because we have multiplied the y-coordinate by negative 1. However, multiplying the line y equals 0 by negative 1 keeps it at y equals 0, so that is still the horizontal asymptote. Now we add 3 to everything, so we shift up vertically. So our horizontal asymptote gets shifted up to y equals 3. 0, negative 1 gets moved up to 0, comma 2, because we have added 3 to the y-coordinate and 1, comma, negative 2 gets shifted up 3 units to 1, comma, 1. And the graph will look something like this. It's the previous graph, but shifted up 3 units. Now, the domain of this function is still all real numbers. Any x value you pick, there will be a point on the curve somewhere. It gets very, very large and negative over here, but any value of x can be plugged in. Any value of x you want can be evaluated here. Now what's the range of this function? Look at the graph compared to the horizontal asymptote, and you'll see that the range is all y values less than 3. So it's the interval from minus infinity to 3. We don't actually reach the horizontal asymptote, so it's not included in the range, but it's everything less than 3. And the horizontal asymptote, as we've already stated, is that line y equals 3. Let's do another example. An exponential function is given to have the form f of x equals a times b to the x, where a and b are constants and b is positive. The graph of the function contains two given points, 0 comma negative 1 half and 2 comma negative 9 over 2. Let's find the values of a and b. In other words, get a nice explicit form for our function f of x. Now, we are given that 0, negative 1 half is on the graph, so f of 0 must equal negative 1 half. So if f of 0 is negative 1 half, look at the original expression, f of x equals a times b to the x, and see what that tells us about x equals 0. We would get a times b to the 0, because that's f of 0. So now we have set a times b to the 0 equal to negative 1 half. But ask yourself, what is the value of b to the 0? Since b to the 0 is 1, we have now solved that a must equal minus 1 half. So we still need to find the value of b, but we now know the value of a. So we can use the other point, 2 comma negative 9 over 2. The first point was important in that the x coordinate was 0. This meant we were going to get a b to the 0, which was going to be something we could evaluate without knowing the value of b. This second point of 2 comma negative 9 half, if we plug in x equals 2, we are going to have to find the value of b here. But since we already know the value of a, that's going to be doable. So f of 2 is negative 9 over 2. So f of 2 being negative 9 over 2, we're going to go ahead and plug in 2 to our expression and get that a, which we know to be negative 1 half, times b to the second power, because 2 is what we're plugging in and b is the unknown base, must equal negative 9 over 2. Dividing both sides by negative 1 half gives us that b squared must equal 9. So what real numbers, when I square them, could equal 9? There are two real numbers that solve this. However, remember that b must be positive, so b is equal to 3, not equal to negative 3. So we have solved for a and b. Therefore, f of x is negative 1 half times 3 to the x. Here's another example. This is similar to the previous problem, but slightly different. We have an exponential function of the form f of x equals a times b to the x, but now we are adding a constant k. Again, the base b must be positive, but otherwise we do not know the values of a, b, and k. We are also not going to be given points on the graph, but rather a graph. Here's a picture of the graph of f of x. Can we find a, b, and k? Well, the question becomes, can we identify any points on this graph and use that information? But also, the graph of an exponential function may tell us what its horizontal asymptote is, which can also be quite useful. So what are some important things we can pull out here? The horizontal asymptote sure appears to be y equals 4, right there. 
So the graph also goes through the point 0, 1, but it also goes through the point 1, 2. In fact, these appear to be the only grid points or integer valued points that we can pull out of the graph, which makes them excellent candidates for information we should use. So we have two points that the graph goes through, but we've also identified the horizontal asymptote. Now f of 0 must equal 1, and f of 1 must equal minus 2. That's what these points tell us. What does the horizontal asymptote tell us? So we've identified two points, and therefore what f of 0 and f of 1 are, but we also know the horizontal asymptote is y equals 4. The value of k is exactly the horizontal asymptote. Remember that b to the x would always have horizontal asymptote y equals 0. Multiplying that by a number will not change y equals 0, but a vertical shift of k will exactly put it at y equals k. So y equals 4 tells us the value of k. k is 4. Now, since we've replaced k with 4, we can use the two points that we have identified to try to find the value of a and b. f of 0 is a handy one to have. x equals 0 being 1 tells us something very nice. Because plugging x equals 0 into our expression allows us to evaluate that b to the 0 is 1, and therefore we have a plus 4 equals 1, or a is equal to minus 3. Now that we know the value of a to be minus 3, we can plug in the other point to try to determine the value of b. So we have the function negative 3 times b to the x plus 4. Let's plug in x equals 1 and know that we get out f of 1 equals negative 2. So we set those two things equal to each other and we get negative 3 times b to the 1 plus 4 is equal to minus 2. We just need to solve this for b, but b to the first is already simply b, so this is pretty direct. You end up by moving the 4 to the other side and noting that b to the first is b. Negative 3b equals negative 6. Divide by negative 3 and get b is positive 2. b did have to be positive, and it is, so that's a good thing to notice. So we've determined that this function is given by negative 3 times 2 to the x plus 4. Now people might ask, in both previous examples, it was really quite important that x equals 0 was one of the points you could identify. Can you do this problem without it? Yes, but it becomes considerably more difficult. So letting one of the points you can identify have x equals 0 makes this problem significantly simpler. And for our courses, ones I teach and people I know, we would only give you such examples. It is possible to do it with two other points and the horizontal asymptote, and neither of the points given has x equals 0, but it becomes much harder. But in any case, this example is done, so let's move on. Of all of the bases we could pick, there is one particular base that comes up in many, many applications. It's the natural exponential function. The base is what we're going to call the natural base. And the base is the number e, which is roughly 2.718, etc. Honestly, I only know it by heart to be 2.7 something. For most purposes, that's close enough. Now the function e to the x is tremendously important when you study calculus. Of all of the exponential functions that you would want to do calculus on, e to the x is it. For our purposes, however, it's basically like any other exponential function whose base is larger than 1. It's some number in between 2 and 3. Now when evaluating f of x equals e to the x, we're just going to write the results as powers of e. e itself is an irrational number. That decimal expansion goes on forever with no pattern. So f of 2 being e squared, there's not really anything you can do with that. You can plug it into a calculator and see what comes out, but in a math course, generally, you're just going to want to leave this as e squared. f of 3 equals e cubed? Fine. Done. f of negative 1 is equal to e to the minus 1? Okay. We would usually call that 1 over e, but whatever. It's the same thing, and there's no simplification to do here. 1 over e or e to the minus 1 is just a totally finished product in a math course. Unless, of course, you are specifically told to estimate something within so many decimal points. But if you're not, just, just use this. Okay, f of 1 half would be e to the 1 half, which would be the square root of e. And again, there's nothing you can do here. Unless instructed to give a decimal approximation, this would be considered a finished product. f of 0 is e to the 0. This one we can simplify, of course. e to the 0 is 1.